this special NBC News report is brought to you by the Gulf Oil Corporation, producers of more and better energy from oil. Here again is Frank McGee. Jack King with an announcement at Cape Kennedy. We'll be clear. Stand by. Proceeding at this time. Just a matter of a minute or so ago, we armed the pyrotechnic and logic buses aboard the Apollo spacecraft. This permits the electrical system uh, to feed to the various uh, pyrotechnics uh, to fire them when required in flight. In other words, by uh, arming them, they now can accept the signal to detonate them when they should be properly used during the mission. Our countdown is still proceeding very well. Here in the launch control center, some 450-man crew monitoring the status of the various propellants on board the vehicle and reading out on hundreds of other readouts concerned uh, with the vehicle measurements and temperatures and pressures as the countdown uh, continues. We've had an excellent countdown thus far, and there are no problems at the present time. To repeat, we are still go for weather, both here in the launch area and in the recovery area, where if all goes well, the Apollo spacecraft will splash down in the Pacific some eight hours and 41 minutes following liftoff. This is launch control. Well, as you heard Jack King say, everything is proceeding very smoothly. When that first stage fires, there will be a seven and a half million pounds of thrust of energy released, more than we've ever had before, and the noise should be greater than anything we've ever heard before. And as David Brinkley once said, the question will be whether the rocket goes up or Florida goes down. We'll be back in just a moment. Now here is a word from Gulf. Less than uh, six minutes now to the scheduled liftoff, and uh, at Cape Kennedy, here is NBC's Roy Neal. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Roy. How are you? Well, thank you. Hope you're the same. You know, that monster out there on Pad 39 was first scheduled to fly almost a year ago. But the problems of bigness and newness and complexity shot the timetable full of holes. Back in September of 1966, the launch complex and the control center were ready, and the giant first and third stages were in place at the vertical assembly building. But trouble at the factory slowed down delivery of the second stage. It arrived five months behind schedule and even then had to be x-rayed to be sure the fuel tanks were not cracked. It's so big that job required 4,000 x-rays and six weeks more of time. The Apollo spacecraft up on top went through extensive modifications after the tragedy that killed three astronauts last January. And those modifications added several more months of delays. Finally, a September launch date was set, only to be slowed down by another change required on the second stage that cost 11 days and a final countdown demonstration test that was supposed to take three days but took 16. Mainly by that time, however, as a result of ground support equipment, not the rocket. Most notably, computers, which forced delays or postponements 14 different times. At last, back on the 13th of October, that test was finally completed, clearing the way for today, which is really the biggest test of them all. Now, you've already heard a good bit about just how big the Saturn Apollo rocket is, before we are finished, you no doubt will hear more. The statistics on the rocket's size and power are staggering. Everyone involved has their own way of explaining just how big Saturn V really is. Uh, here's one of NBC's. A football field extends 100 yards. If you add the two end zones, it's 120 yards or 360 feet long. Saturn V is almost exactly the same size. All that size and power is needed to combat gravity and get off the ground. Stage one alone is about 46 yards long, the length of a pretty sensational field goal kick. Laid on its side, the whole rocket would extend from one end of the field to the other. A fast halfback can run the full distance in about 10 seconds with all his equipment on. Saturn V, fully fueled, with its 7.5 million pounds of thrust will take longer after ignition than that to clear the launch pad. Now here is Jack King. And all the launch support operations well at this time at 90 seconds and counting. Houston flight now confirms that they are that they are go for the flight as are all other aspects of the mission. T minus one minute, 16 seconds and counting. The pressurization continuing within the vehicle at this time. We also have 
a hydraulic commit that will permit the hydraulics to drive the engines in the first stage. Liquid hydrogen tank in the second stage now pressurizing. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 60. Our status board still shows we're go at this time. T minus 50 seconds and counting. We have transferred to in power internal power. The transfer is satisfactory. The 6.2 million pound Saturn V launch vehicle now on its own power at 38 seconds and counting. To repeat, the ignition sequence will start at 8.9 seconds. We'll be looking to lift off at zero. T minus 30 seconds and counting. We'll count down from starting at T minus 20. T minus 25. Stage is reporting ready for launch. T minus 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Five, four, we have ignition. All engines are running. We have liftoff. We have liftoff at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The tower has been cleared. The tower. Roger, Jack. Tower clear. 15 seconds out. The pitch and roll program are in. All engines still go. Booster report. First big stage burns for two and a half. One minutes. minute, one minute, and looking good. It's the biggest thing ever lifted off Earth. Vehicles climbing very nicely. Our velocity is now 2,000, about 2,500 feet per second. We are two, three miles downrange. Three miles downrange. The flight controllers are reporting enthusiastically that all parameters look good. The flight director says go all the way. One minute, 50 seconds. miles downrange, two minutes, coming up on uh, staging. Booster says he's go on all sources. The rocket is over. The inboard engines have cut off. The inboard engines have shut down at approximately two minutes, 18 seconds. yet on the outboard engines. There are the outboard engines. We can see it visually. Outboard cutoff was called at 2 minutes 34 seconds. We're 50 miles downrange. The S2 has ignited. Great. Thrust is okay on the S2. The booster says we've got a good second stage. Good. We are 64 miles downrange. Our velocity approximately 10,000 feet per second. Second plane has separated the interstage surrounding the second stage engines. And the tower has jettisoned. 